All righty. Welcome to another episode of the Five Flag Adventures. We are adventuring in Icewind Dale. And last we left off, the party was introduced to the town of Kerr Koenig, the starting town for this campaign, in the Ten Towns uh, series of settlements. Having gone to the inn, the Northern Light, uh, meeting the two sisters who run it, you also met an individual, a scholar of sorts, or a scientist, trying to study these weird creatures called uh, Chiwingas around ten towns. Uh, you were given a magic item, I believe, one of you, to help in detecting these creatures, because uh, you need to capture one and bring it back to the quest giver, which, yes, so they give it back to Danica, Danica Graysteel who's the half-elf woman who asked you to do this. You were able to get a half up front. It's 12 and a half gold, or 12 gold and five silver to be exact. And that quest is now in the long term back of your minds. You asked uh, the in owners if uh, they needed any help at all. And recently they have a lantern that's been stolen from them. Um, Allie and Corey, the two sisters. A lot of things have been missing from this small town of Keo Koenig. But specifically the lantern was taken, which was very important to uh, this inn, the Northern Light Inn. They get the name from the lantern that can supposedly change colors. And uh, you agreed to help them. And I believe you are going to the uh, expedition store, Frozen for Expeditions, with the drunken, uh, quite useless speaker of the town, Trovis, a uh, dragonborn silver. And with his help, or influence, more like it, you were able to get some sleds and dogs temporarily for some sort of expedition. And I believe you were hired, or were in the middle of hiring Jarthra, the, the um, guide, the dwarf guide. Is that right? Okay, one second, having a little bit of technical difficulties because your voices are not going through. Let me try and fix that. Um, one second. Let's try that. Hello. Hello, guys. Can you hear me? Hello. 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 Is that, that better? Yeah, that, that seems to be better. All right, now everybody can hear you. The audience, we are good to go. I've got some music in the background. Um, hopefully it's not too loud. Um, but there we go. So, as you've got your sleds and everything pretty much ready, what are you going to do? Um, we were going to meet up with her 
first thing in the morning. So I think we had the evening to ourselves, to whatever. Yeah, and uh, I had asked Bonrick if he would uh, give me a hand because we're short on a few dogs. Sure. Um, and I had outfitted myself with a uh, harness of sorts. Yes, you're acting as one of the dogs. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to uh, test the uh, mechanic of, uh, or the feasibility of me helping to pull and or push a sled. So. Yep, I... Uh... I set myself down in the sled. I'm like, all right, let's give this a try. Yeah. Um, I'll bundle up all, first I'll bundle up all of the, uh, all of the lead and I'll put it up in his lap. I want to, and I'm going to, I'm going to test first, seeing if I can push it. Um, uh, Seeing if I can get it get it moving at all with his weight. I don't think she realized it, honey. Yeah. Say what? Go ahead. Um, Did he not give just... you drinks? We got shakes. No, we didn't uh, get shakes. George, you're hot mic'd. Oh, that wasn't for in game. I thought that was in game. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused too. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, um, how about you make an athletics check, Astar, to see if you are as mighty as a sled dog? Okay. Uh, and I was looking at so strength check. Uh, athletics is fine. Or athletics. Yeah. Okay. Uh, where is my oh, no athletics? There it is. Because I know I can push quite push and pull whatever quite a bit of weight 14 did you care to have any uh, abilities related to pushing or dragging um not specifically uh but it uh, but I can Push, lift, drag up to 450 pounds. Right, that's just based on your strength score. Which remind yeah. me what your strength score is again? Um, mine is a 15 plus 2. 15. Yeah. Alright, um, you. You're having a little bit of trouble uh, being as accustomed to the push and pulls. It's not necessarily your strength waning. It's more your ability to just keep pace and to continue pushing. So eventually you probably would tire faster than the dogs would. Okay. Um, and that's just me on foot currently. So I'm going to try one other option, which is going to be probably what I use um, with the dogs, or in conjunction with the dogs. And I, I'll step out front of the the sled and I'll, I'll grab the harness that I put on my, 
and I'll clip myself in and I'll, I'll pull the line as, as, as taut as I can and I'll just kind of shrug my shoulders for a second and you see this is probably the first time that Vonrick's seen this the uh, um, the cloak the, the almost leathery cloak that goes around his shoulders all the time uh, with the two hooked clasps in uh, at his collar um, releases and spreads out to a full set of wings and I will use everything and push forward flapping um, and I'm going to try and see if I can pull off in flight I, I've always felt that flying takes more of an ener energy, especially when there's wind to push against. Um, flapping wings and... You don't have the ground, yes, but it's just as treacherous in the air. Um, right. I'm just seeing if with a little bit of lift on the on the front of the sled that I can get it pulling across the top of the snow a little bit easier. Um, and then I'm also taking into account we're going to have at least three dogs helping to pull this sled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, you are definitely... It's definitely able to go, but you are going to be at the speed of a full sled dog team. On that particular sled. Okay. Half speed is better than no speed, so. Yeah. <laughs> and then if we can get, and if, if if we have, if we load down this, my sled, with mostly our supplies, and not a person, and just have one more person on the back that can help run and push a little bit, that would uh, kind of help make up the difference, is what I'm thinking. I'm not built for distance running. Right. Short bursts of speed. <sighs> but I think uh, Trin might be able to take that. I just As you guys. As you guys are always figuring this out, going over everything, um, your guy that you've hired uh, is Jarthra. Jar Jar she goes over to you guys and she looks and she says, well, you've hired me as a guide, so I'm going to just say my experience here and ask you a question, is there, is this uh, something you need to get past? Are you looking to make haste for this adventure you're on? I mean, we don't have to, we aren't on a ticking time clock, so to speak, but the sooner the better, obviously. Well, personally, I, if you're not on a time crunch, I, you'd rather save yourself some gold, and I'm not even sure you need these, these sleds. You've, you've obviously traveled here on foot. You've got your backpacks. I, I, I mean, unless you're, you're expecting to find a bunch of treasure, you need to haul back. I personally recommend we go on foot. Dogs only for speed and, and, and carry weight, carrying gear. A team like yourselves, it's better to go on foot. Foot or by axe beak? What is an axe beak? <laughs> an axe beak is a common uh, mount we have here in uh, Icewind Dale. In ten towns, we. I'm not gonna uh, not gonna lie. They're not cheap. 
and some towns don't have much. I think we have one or two here in Kaokoneg. But they're basically large bird-like creatures that are very good at running across the snow. What? We do now. Have, oh, go ahead. We do have a seller here that has one or two uh, axe peaks. But like I said, they're quite expensive. Yeah, and one or two isn't going to do much for the six of us, is it? She says, nope. So I've, I've told you my, uh, my thing. I'm being paid either way. But I recommend we go on foot. I got legs. Let's use them. Because with dogs, you have to stop every hour anyway. They're not really good at long, long travel distance. On foot it is. It is. It might be best. So we can get your gold refunded back to you? No problem. Their deposit, that is. That works. Alright. So, you go inside and get your five gold back. Which you can <clears throat> give yourself five gold. Whoever Maybe. gave that. Was it... Did I put that up? I believe you did. Okay. In Fantasy Grounds, I'm the only one that has the log, the chat log, as like a text file. So I can bring that up if anybody needs to look at any chat, previous chat things. No worries. Um, but yeah, if that is squared off, then, uh, she says, yeah, it, I think that's probably best. Alright, do you want to meet us at the, uh, Northern Lights in the morning, first thing? She says, in the morning? Alright. She looks, I mean, it is only about two right now in the afternoon. But if you prefer to go in the morning, I'm I'm fine. I mean, I don't care. You wanna go out head out tonight, that's fine. I just didn't know if you need the need an evening to get your supplies and everything together. I just need an hour and I'm good to go. Look at the rest of the group. You guys ready to go? I mean, is there any reason to sit around and waste time, or should we get get on to it tomorrow, right now? Uh, I, I'm afraid if we stick around, somebody else is going to ask us to do something. Yeah, but that that leads to money. Always. But this, then again, this doesn't. So, um. I'm fine with leaving this afternoon. Okay. Yes. Uh, I would just like to go back into the uh, outfitter for a moment. Okay. And I just go inside to try and find the, the guy who runs the outfitter. Yep, that is uh, Aitnas, the, uh, the outfitter. I wonder if Frozen Fire Expeditions. Uh, uh, when I find him, I'll uh, ask him. This may sound strange, but uh, how much to keep this? And I'll and I, I pull at the uh, the harness that I'm wearing. Um. Eight Nas, who now I look description, he's pretty, he's pretty seasoned guy, like, 
He's a mid sixties, gray haired human man. Um, his joints seem to almost creak when he moves, but not in a old, decrepit way. More in a, um, like a bitter, resilient way. Um, he's not as young as he used to be, but you can also tell he must have been a really uh, adventurous guy in his younger days. Um, he looks at you and he says, yeah, if you want to keep that, uh, I'd say I'd give you that for the gold piece. Hmm. Is it, looking at the, the, I'm assuming they're, uh, you know, basic little leather harnesses and whatnot with clasps and rigging. Um, does it all seem like it's in good condition, or is it kind of frayed and worn? Surprisingly, it's everything in this store is pretty, pretty good condition. This is, uh, this equipment here is probably the best equipment you've seen so far as in Chaos Codec. Compared okay. to the Northern Night, which was bare bones minimum. You know, the main room was maybe 30 feet in its maximum spacious direction. Uh, so it's, this is, this is top notch equipment. Okay. So then for this harness and that map would be a total of two gold pieces, you said? Yes, I'd, I've been, as you were talking before with the uh, Jarthra there, I, I got you a, a map sorted. Um, it's got all the ten downs on here. I think it'll help you adventures right out. And he lays the map down in front of you and shows you what it looks like. And the direction we intend to head tomorrow or, uh, on this expedition is towards the spine of the world? Or is it the Red Glacier? Uh, Trovis, who is still there, <laughs> she says, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's back behind the Northern Light, the, the footsteps. So, uh, yeah, I believe It's, uh, leading towards Calvin's card, which she then points to the map. And Calvin's card is right, if you can look on the map, right up there, right in the middle, yeah. Yeah. So, and your, right. your town... Mm -hmm. Is right there, so it's like northwest of your t town. Ah, uh, okay. Um, and I will, as, as as they're talking and have the map out, I just take out the absent-mindedly, like just take out the two gold pieces, and I hold it. I hold them down on the counter with my two fingers, and with my other hand, I start pulling out um, uh, a a kit and I just start from what I saw looking outside and uh, knowing looking around the region a bit I just start filling in the the bumps and um, you know the, the unusual topography that I noticed between Kerr Koenig and uh, Kelvin's Karn with my cartographer's kit. Yeah, um, you know your maps, and you can tell that Kerkonig, uh, it's got snowy tundras just like pretty much everywhere, but it becomes more mountainous 
with more upper hills. The closer and closer you get to Kel Kelvin's Clan. Also lots of valleys towards that direction as well. Okay. And I'll, I'll look over at the guide. I'm t uh, you have to forgive me, Ari. You know I'm terrible with names. Um, and so this is the... Uh, this is where we're going. And this... And I, I'd kind of like... With my finger trace out the what I would see would be the easiest quote unquote path between the two. Uh, she looks at it and she's like Yeah, that that'll that's pretty good. We can go that path. I see you know your maps. Uh with practice, yes. Thank you. And I roll up the map and I finally take my two fingers off the gold coins on the counter. And I pack everything up. All right. Um, yeah. And I keep, yeah, obviously I'm keeping the harness, so I'll, I'll add that to my inventory if you don't mind. Sure. All right, so when are you going to leave? Are you going to leave right away after an hour? It's the minimum Jartha needs, or, or do you want to wait till, uh, like you said, the next day? I think, with the, I think we were in agreement to head out in an hour knowing that there's no real difference in, you know, light with the time of day. No real reason to wait. Okay. So fast forward an hour. You guys are ready to leave. Trovis says his goodbyes and good luck. Drunkenly, of course. And you head with Jartha to the back of the Northern Inn. Um, unfortunately, the prints are not there anymore. They were actually never there. They just told you where they were. Um, Jartha said, so, we're just heading towards Kevin Cowan? That's, that's what we're doing? Yep. And keep, keeping our so. eyes out. And keeping our eyes out for any, where, that someone may have hidden ill-gotten goods. All right. I will be looking for any types of tracks as we go as well. Humanoid tracks. Make a survival check. Boom, natural 20. Nice, I'm not gonna roll them. 26. Fucking snap. <laughs> so you would probably be in the front then, eh? Can I have a marching order, actually? Marching order! Oh, I forgot that. Chime, Chime would probably like to stay more towards the, uh, the middle of everything. Um... I thought we'll just fill in whatever hole. Trin is um, very much like front of the group. She's striding ahead. 
Wait, so... Right. Trent is kind of friends. Mm -hmm. Feel free to place yourselves on this formation map. Where you want to be located. It's no... There's no real paths right now. So you just... You can go any formation you want. We'll pretend forward is north up at the top of the map. I don't see a map. Open the party sheet. In the party yeah. sheet. Sheet. Oh. Got it. Yeah. When I say Trin is in the front, I mean she's like way up uh. there. And yes, you can draw if you want. Oh. Oh, don't tell us that, Ari. <laughs> oh, I see what you're drawing. My inner 14-year-old wanted to jump on this and start drawing a penis. I'm, But I'm not going to because I'm a good person. You mean you're will, not 14 anymore? I will withhold judgment. Um, so, how long do we go before I have to say, Trin, you're going the wrong way. Trin, you're going the wrong way. Oh, probably Trin, about three minutes. So she's, <laughs> she's, uh, she's running up there. She, like, she's ahead. She's probably even ahead of Jartha, Jarthra. Um, and just kind of looking around and taking in the sights and then every time she looks back and sees that you all are going a different direction she'll um or she'll you know change course and go that way but she's, she's probably never more than 20 feet away from the rest of the group okay um Let's see. I'm going to put Jartra on the combat tracker. Do you guys <laughs> see her on the combat tracker? Um, how do I find that? It's next <coughs> to the party sheet on the... Uh, yeah. it looks like... Yes. Yes, Jarthra. Yes, that's your... off. Yeah, so she's there. She's considered indifferent in, in, in terms of uh, being an ally. That's why she's a different color. I don't have a token, so the token is a J for Jarthra. I like to do Smart. the combat tracker up and running. Just even before combat, just so that it's there. Mm -hmm. Um, my god, so many windows. There but, would never be any combat in this, though, right? We're, we're this is a happy thing. There's no fighting. Having a good time. We're 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 not in any danger whatsoever. <laughs> All right, so... Ari, you're being too quiet. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, almost like he's up to something. Never. I know, right? All right, so you set off and are traveling, we'll say, a good half an hour of travel, maybe even a bit longer. Traveling with no sign until both Jarthra and Vonrek immediately finds um, a, a weird track in the snow. Because we're dwarves, right? <laughs> Um, do I recognize this track at all? 
Um, the track is a set of huge um, feet, too. And also, what seems like a, a large groove that just continues going. Like if just something's being dragged across the snow. Um, go ahead and make a nature check. Can I help him with this, since I've been through parts of Ten Towns before? If, uh... If, if, the, uh, Vondrick wants to, you know, show you the tracks, yeah. Yeah, I would, I would definitely, you know, let them know that I've seen tracks. That's why, I, or then they're not tracks that I would recognize at all. Uh, no. You wouldn't instantly recognize these. Okay. So, helping with the advantage, and you said nature. Ooh. 19, um... With no modifier. <laughs> you... can tell that it is... Big, its feet got it's got large toes and the heel is quite big and bulbous. And you realize nineteen, okay. Nineteen is really good, but it's not super amazing. So you realize this is like an ogre track. But something's not quite white about the footprint. You can't really put your finger on it, but something's not quite right. And it is a pair of tracks, right? It's not like just one footprint. Uh, you see just one footprint and something being dragged. Or they're sliding on something and pushing it with one foot. Hmm. Well, you see a pair of feet, you do. Oh, okay, I yeah. do see two feet, two footprints, okay. Yeah, I thought you meant two ogres now. No, so, no, no, yeah, I wanted to make sure, I'm like, looks off, maybe, is there only one footprint, and then there's the slide next to it, maybe it's... <laughs> it's sliding. skateboarding, that's, that's what's going on, that's why you don't see the other one, it's the wheels <laughs> going through the snow, he's skateboarding. And the footprint is in front of the dragon. Okay. Obviously, because it's dragging it. Yeah, I would, uh, I would look at it and... This is a quarter mile outside of town, by the way. Okay, so we're still pretty close. Town. Um, oof. that, that looks like it might be ogre. Jartha, you guys have ogres in this area? I know you said yetis, but that looks more ogre-ish than yetis. Uh, that, uh, she says, yeah, that's definitely ogre. I think. Mm. It's pretty ogre-ish. Something not quite right about the, the, the groove, yeah. though. Pulling something has got some weight. Well, is it... And is, are these tracks headed in general the same direction we were going? Uh, yeah, it's definitely heading that way. Well, we have a trail to follow now. They head right towards the mountain. Um... Yeah, 
that right towards the mountain. Okay. Well, we can, uh, I guess this is the best uh, thing to follow right now. It's the only evidence we've got. You all look up and Trin is like 25 feet away, heading that direction. Trin, you're going to fall and... through something on your own. And I don't and feel like killing you. Hey, it's fine. I'm sure it is. I'm about to shoot you in the ass and drag you back over. But I'd like to see you try. That's uh Famous last words of, it'll be fine. Yeah. All right, let's go. Before she gets herself into more trouble. Like, always. Right, let's go. I guess we keep plodding along. All right, as you continue forwards, um, another half mile. Um, oh no, another two miles. You now see those tracks, and they veer uh, towards the northeast. They were on a beeline, and now they're kind of going to the northeast direction. Still towards the Gavin Khan. But towards like the more northeast section. Around the kind of the side. Do you continue going? I don't think we have a choice, really. Okay. You have followed the tracks straight to the foothills of Kevin's car. The tracks have been... They, they've disappeared. You're now right at the foot of the mountain. As I noticed that, they're, that the tracks have gone away, I would start looking around to see if I see anything that looks like it might be a den or, you know, a possibly somewhat camouflaged entrance or anything along those lines. Alright, um, so it just says, I'm gonna help you too. And the rest of you join in as well. All gonna help him? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. You all start searching for what happened. Wait, this is going to be a group check. Survival. Uh, this is for the first hour of searching. Alright, so we're all rolling for survivals? Yes, yeah, so that is... Actually, I can click a button and it'll roll all of you at once. Party sheet time. Yay! Automatic group check. Survival. I need to put the DC though. Need to type it in. And I'll just have to add Jartha manually. And you guys don't get to see the roll. Just me. Oh my. <laughs> okay. Just Tr tell me, am I a shitty cat again? <laughs> Time, Astar, and Trin wrote a natural three. God. Mm. I mean, That's I'm a unusual. Six, so. Oh, Vonrick, you got a 23. Hey. Um. Milan also failed, so four failures, and half of the party that sticks need at least half of the party succeed. So it comes down to 
Okay, there's only one success. So yeah, ju yeah. Ju Judge 20 is a natural 20. But all it means is just another check for another hour of checking. We'll say it's 5 p.m. right now. Um, where, let me, uh, shoot, I lost her sheet. Oh, there it is. In instantly found it. Alright, uh... And she has advantage, because this is her favorite place, um... And so she has succeeded. But not a natural 20, which means it's another, um, hour of searching. Because this was a failure. And I unfortunately lost my... My place. Sorry, there's so many PDFs. Even more than World 20 had, actually. But everything is cross reference, so I like that. Alright, so. Another hour of searching. You're having a hard time finding it. Oh, okay. I like this feature. If two group checks fail in a row, I roll for a random encounter. I like that. <laughs> nice. Alright, um... Let's see if this is public. I want to do a public. Is that public? Can you no, guys? I no, it wasn't. I should the shadows roll. Oh. I don't know how to make it public then. Oh well, um... So, this time... Success, success. Fail, fail, fail. Two successes. Jarta can do a third. If she does... Which she does. So... Thanks to Jorta, you have succeeded in the second hour. So no random encounter. Alright. So, I'm gonna turn down the music a little bit. It's a little bit loud. Okay. So, second hour, as you're searching through the foothills, of Kelvin's Karen, you find something. You reach a, 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 a hill and you see into the mountain what looks like a blocky stronghold, bereft of warmth or charm. I, it juts right out of the side of the hillside in a rough crescent shape. Only part of its construction is visible. The rest is buried in the stone. As you're looking from a distance, like a few hundred feet, you see a large double door of stone as the main entrance. The train leading to this place is a gently upward sloping plain covered with fresh snow. A stream it used to flow out of a buried culvert northeast of the main entrance, but the waterway is completely frozen. Two other barred openings can be seen along the stronghold's northern wall. Anyone positioned behind these openings would have an un unobstructed view of the hillside. Closer to you, separated from the rest of the stronghold, is a snow-covered stone bunker perforated by arrow slits.
That don't look too welcoming, do it? Does, as far as the design and stonework and stuff, is it anything that looks familiar to myself? Um, make a history, I guess. Okay. Can, and... can, can Trin also make one? Do you, do you get advantage for those kind of stuff, Roderick? Yes. Intelligence history check related to origin of stonework. You're proficient, considered proficient in the history skill and dub, double your proficiency bonus to the check. All right, so just add two, two to the check then. All right. What for if you're not proficient in it? Um... I'm considered proficient, even though it doesn't say uh, not normally, and double your proficiency bonus to the check. So it'll be plus four. Yeah, you're, you're not usually proficient in S3, yeah. so it'll be plus four. If I did that right. Ooh, natural 20. Natural. 4, 24. Natural 20, man. Second natural 20? I'll <laughs> take it. Yeah, this is the second one tonight. Immediately. <laughs> immediately. As soon as you see it, you recognize it as a Duragar outpost. Ooh. This is definitely a home or an outpost of some sort of band of Duragar. We need to be, we need to be very careful here. What is it? It is Dorgar Deep Orbs. And that's bad? Wouldn't you be like cousins? We would be like cousins, but it's normally a strained relationship. Oh, white. I get that. All right. Um. I would look over at um, Jarth and say, "Is there a, was there actually no Dorgar in the in the mountain in the hills, or is this new?" As she says, there is rumor that they there are some around these parts, but they've never really bothered anyone before. I mean, there's always outliers in every group. I once, I once met a troll that was quite brilliant, but who knows? Shall we? Check around first to make sure we are looking into something that's currently being lived in. Maybe this is old. Maybe this is unused. How far away are we from it? Uh, like hundreds of feet right now. Because you, you're looking at it from quite a distance. And this is like uh, embedded in a cliff face, kind of. After Vonrick tells Chime about these bad dwarves, she would cast Mage Armor on herself. 
All right. Try and cast and see if it adds the the right thing in the. Uh, it did not add the effect. Uh, so, what? How do I do that? Actually, maybe do. Let me open. No, I didn't. Um, you have yeah. to drag it to the uh to the. I don't know why I put eight. Yeah. I don't know. Ah, that just did something weird. Um, I didn't not. I don't know. I was trying to drag it, but then my mouse unclicked. Where do I need to drag it to? On the combat tracker. Okay, just onto my name. Yeah, and make sure the mode of your sheet is in either. Yeah, that'll work too. Once you're done preparing all your spells and everything, if you do that, any of you guys, make sure you your mode is combat mode or standard mode. On the okay. on, on, how do we do that? On the actions tab of your character sheet, the very bottom one. You click that, and then at the bottom there'll be mode, and you just click. The mode to cycle between them. But anyway, it is now on you the effect of yes. armor class. Am right, I done? Yes. Alright. Awesome. Also, I need to see if I can. Dwarven resilience. Put that on you. I'll have to figure that out. Because it's on the other dwarf automatically. To make all poison and be resistant. So we don't have to mm. remember. Um, anyway. That would never be an issue, though. You'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you're really far away from this, this Durgar outpost, what do you want to do? Does it look like this is where the ogre tracks were headed? Um, you're not sure the ogre tracks disappeared around the northeast. Um, there, this is the northeast of the Calvin's Cairn, but you can't be certain. All right, all right, all right. Uh, do we want to try to check it out? Or do we just want to flee? This, is, this might be the... I mean... This looks pretty old. I maybe it's just being used by the ogre, and honestly, carrying dragging something like a sled or something. He's probably the one that took everything from the town. This is, right. Uh. Well. I'm just gonna try to be quiet and sneak up on it. All right, I guess, I guess that's the game plan then. Let's try to get closer and see if it's actively being used by a Durgar, a weird ogre, or something else. Sure. I'm all good for it. Okay. All right, I guess we're uh, slinking closer. Very sneakily, though. Okay. Uh, how how many of you are approaching? Not Mayland. <laughs> oh, trends going. I mean, we're uh, hundreds of feet away from the place, so we need to get somewhat close. We can't. I mean, I'll get close <sighs> enough to get a good bow shot. How's that? Sounds good. 
Um, we. I'll I'll get closer, cause. I'll go, I'm gonna get. Bonnard's going. I've never seen a Durga. It'd be kind of interesting to see what they look like. I will definitely come with you. All right, um, everybody. I mean, you're basically right now on, like, the edge of a of a snowy bank, which means they cannot. It, you can see the outposts, but nobody can really keep eyes on you. If you head forward, you're kind of using the edge of the mountain to creep closer, hug the cliff, um, kind of flank the sides, stealthily approach. There are no trees, per se, so all of this is using the natural terrain to still through. So, everyone who's going, make me a stealth check. Stealth check. I forget how to... Oh, I click this. Nope. No. I'm not a shitty cat. Also, due to the nature of where this outpost is located, the shadow has created a heavily obscured vision for those without dark vision. So those without dark vision can sh just see shadows and edges of of structures, but not not much details at all. Uh, I think that would be our poor human. Yep. Me. Oh, I do not have night so. vision either. Oh. Oh, I forgot that for bulk stone. You are so you're night. So you're night blind and snow blind. Got it. So it was like, I didn't sign up yep, for any of this. I'm just guiding. I got to where you wanted. I'll wait here. Let me know when you want to go back. Sounds good. Where's your sense of adventure? It left a long time ago. Now I'm just a guide. It's in his coin purse. Okay. You really don't want to go check out some Dorgar? Uh, no. I'm good. They're nasty folk. <laughs> Guys, we didn't pay them to fight. We paid them to guide, and they did that. So let let them be. We get to go go kill the things if there's anything to kill. Yeah. It's true. And if there's any lost hidden lost dwarven treasures, she doesn't get any of them. That too. Okay, so this is what happens. <laughs> I'm going to add the map now. First map, guys. I was going to say, this is the first time we've had a map on here. Bear with me, because I've never done this before. I've just tested it out a few times, but... Can you see the map? Can you see your tokens? I can see my token, I cannot see a map. Can you see how far your vision goes? See my token on a map. A, on a grid, I should say. Yep. So yeah, you... Uh, whoever does not have dark vision, which I don't think fur bogs do, actually. Nope, they don't. I, I do don't. not. I already said I did not. Oh, sorry. I thought it was... So it's the human and the full bog. Um, that's why you would probably see just blackness. Um, and I'm assuming 20 feet to my south is a wall. And that's why my vision ends there. Um, I think at this point it's probably just map's edge. 
Where do you are you talking about? Like over here? Uh, no, if you go like where where my character's token is. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it when I draw. But straight south of me, straight down. I go twenty feet. There's a hard line. Yeah, that's the to the map. Oh, okay. Sounds good. So the the whole place is like this is like a valley kind of can you see the arrow I'm drawing? Or do I have to uh, let go? No. You may have there we go. There it is. Okay. That's too bad. Okay. Wish there was a big okay. finger. How to make it bigger? Something. But yeah, so there. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. That's like the uh, the the lower area where the the frozen river is. That I was talking about. Okay. Um, and then you guys, for now, I've just placed you on like the second to lowest upper area. I think that was with dark vision. Vonrick, can you see the edge, like over here? I can just make it out, yes. So you can just make out yeah. the bunker that I mentioned. Okay. Yeah. Okay, me too. Yes. So, as you guys, as you guys are over there, you're approaching from that side. And that's you want to put. Tell me where you want to approach. Actually, I'll let you decide where you want to approach. Now that there's a map. Well, okay. You said the bunkers over on this, like upper corner of this map. Kind of, yeah. Okay, so. Bonrick will point in the direction of that red blob. Okay, yeah. that That's where we're headed, so... I guess, uh... Let's see. And this wavy thing is the river, right? Yes. And then the little path next to it? Like, yeah, there's a little path next to it, so we probably need to drop, go s south, east a okay. bit, and then jump onto that path that crosses the river. Yeah, I was going to ask, is this a bridge? Um, I, I just drew a little blue mark. Oh, I see it. Yeah, there. Is that a bridge over the river? Uh, the walkway. The waterway is frozen. Um. I guess it's a bridge, yeah. Yeah, it's a bridge. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess that'd be our safest place to cross right there. If that's where the footpath goes across. Um, right, we can cross there and not have to worry about the ice caving in, I don't think. I'm trying to set it so that you don't have to ask me to move your characters. Because it's not technically combat. Uh, I can't figure it out. I know there's a way. For now, I guess I'll just have to ex type it, it, like a click. Yeah, I can't can't find it. Anyway. Okay, so I will click yes.
So yeah, when you want to move your characters, you have to wait for me to to give you acceptance, I guess. Permission. But yeah, anyway, go ahead and move your characters. I'll just click every time. I know there's a way to turn it off, though. I found it, and then I forgot where it was. <sighs> it's actually annoying to have to do that. Found it! I think I found it. Okay, you're now free to move however you want. I trust you not to move past areas because I can't block your tokens. So, just move a little bit at a time. But now you don't have to wait for me, just move however you want. Um, and as I start to get closer, I am on high alert trying to look for any movement or anything along those lines. Make a perception check. Ladies and gentlemen, you are now free to move about the camp. <laughs> oh, here's my good rolls. Fourteen. Uh, that is... Okay, fourteen. Um... As you are approaching, you, Von Rick, with, because of your stealth before, you actually get to the side of the cliff, and your armor kind of hits the sides, giving a, a scrape noise. It echoes throughout the ca the cairn, the valley. Oh. Yeah. And... You see her from up there. Oh, and he starts talking in, in uh, Undercommon. Do you know Undercommon? No. Anybody know Undercommon? Yes. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Friend oh. does. Yes. Okay, well, you guys would hear. What was that noise? I'm gonna check it out. Mm -hmm. Derek? Hmm? Do I hear multiple, like, voices? Or just one singular? Just one right now. If I heard and understood that, um, Chime would. She'd start like trying to make si like point to hide because something's coming. I will try to make myself small and as unseen as possible against an open cliff face. Okay. As my middle armor is hitting me. Uh, um. How much snow is on the ground right now? Uh, a good amount. Enough that Chime could bury herself. <clears throat> I'd say so, yeah. She would start, like, scooching down into the snow and trying to bury herself just so that she could just poke her eyes out and just be able to see. Okay. Um, so yeah, oh. I, yeah. All right. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I know on this map that I, because I don't have dark vision, I can't see the um, compound. Am I supposed to not be able to see anybody else? Uh, no one is using light sources, so right now. The... So I can't see where anybody is. Not very well. No, you can't. 
with the wind blowing right now and the night sky, or the not night sky, but the, the, the perpetual winter, there is no sun in the sky ever in Icewind Dale right now because of this perpetual winter. So you will never have bright light during daytime. Always dim. And right now, this location, it makes it quite far into the mountains, or just the natural shadows make it even darker. So those without a light source or dark vision are essentially blind. Okay. Uh, noticing that they haven't, that, uh, Malin and Trin haven't moved and realizing, oh shit, they can't see. I will quietly coast back to them. Just like, because I'm assuming this change in is a slight change in elevation. Yes. Okay. Then can I glide back over to them? Yeah, no problem. They can hold on to you as well. All right. Uh, I'll get I'll get here and I'll just say I'm I'm still wearing that harness, so I'll just have them grab onto the backs of the harness and uh, kind of guide them over towards the little bridge and across. Okay, well, someone's going to have to move my token because I don't know. I can't see anything. Okay, hang on. Okay, both of you can kind of go over there. Okay, thank you. Um, the Durgar comes out of the bunker on the edge. Come on. I think I need a lot more practice with fantasy grounds. Because I cannot get this to work. Really. Isn't there a way that you can apply the map to the back texture? Uh, yeah, but then it's just a picture. Can't move tokens on it. Oh. That seems... Uh... This is so that everything is calculable. Targets, AOE, everything. All the automation. Okay. Um... Which is really the only reason I got Fantasy World. It's for all the automation... Things. Things I just know is instead of guessing. Um... I'm just having a trouble actually setting things up because I had assumed that if the campaign is purchased, everything's set up, but I just I just don't know the system. Can you guys you guys can even move that guy? I don't even know what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, I can and now I can't see my own token. Yep. Okay, we're going to do Theory of the Mind. I'm not going to do map until actually fighting starts. Okay. Until I get a handle, a handle on this better. Oh, I just figured out how to find my token back. Haha. <laughs> Click I... on your character sheet. All right, so, um, as you go up to the mountain, a Durgar comes out of the bunker. It approaches the edge of the cliff, uh, right outside the bunker, uh, looks over, and just grunts to himself as you guys are pressed up your bodies against the cliff. And 
crossbow in hand. He's aiming it around and then goes back inside the bunker. And, um, so, now, what do you guys want to do? Um, when he, when he was looking out and, and kind of scanning, was he squinting like he was having a hard time seeing, or were his eyes wide like he could see everything? You can assume that the dog I can see here. <laughs> just, just, just asking, you know. There's always the chance that they cur they normally live in the Underdark. But still, I, I, I get to play dumb this campaign because, yeah, I don't have to, I don't have a character who has thoughts about the Duragar. I don't have thoughts about a lot of things, but my ancient cousins I have to think about. <laughs> um, seeing this outpost, is there, does there seem to be a front door Yes, I mentioned a, a huge double door right at the front. Large double door of stone serves as the main entrance. The terrain leading to it is a gently upward sloping plain covered with fresh snow. A stream used to flow out of a barred culvert northeast of the main entrance. The stream used to flow, but now it's frozen. That's the stream that goes out there and around. Okay. Two other barred openings can be seen along the northern wall. They're openings, but they're barred. Anyone that might sit behind that barred opening could see the unobstructed view of the entire hillside. Well, kind of looks to me like we've got three options. We can go up and knock on the front door. Maybe they're civil and friendly. We can try to storm the keep from the outside. It's not going to work and we're going to die. And, like, why would we? Because they're Dorgar. Okay, and they haven't done anything to us. They've been stealing goods from the city. We don't know it's them. They're Dorgar. Or we can try to get the bars out of the frozen stream, as that probably will lead underground and, un and below the city, below the keep. Or else, why would they put bars on it if it doesn't flow from inside the keep? Are there any light sources coming from inside the the keep that we can see? Uh, make a perception check. Ew. No, no idea. Nothing obvious. Okay. What 
if we go in from the top? How in the bloody hell do you suppose we do that? One at a time. And I'll... Trin? Mm -hmm. You like doing dumb shit. Most of the time. Wanna go for a ride? Absolutely. What kind of what kind of armor are you wearing? Um, I don't think it's. Um, I have on. How do I find out? Inventory. Um, leather. It's leather armor. Wonderful. Um, I will. <laughs> I'm gonna take the uh, the tail of the harness, and I'm gonna loop it through her sh the shoulder of her armor, and clasp it. And I'll say, "This is a rip cord. When we get to the roof, you pull and land on your feet." Okay. Yeah. Sure. I trust you. And, uh. uh Malin, 15 feet to your left is Chin, or is Chime. You might want to stay with her. Righto. Uh... And I will quietly start flying, and I will lift Trin helicopter style to the roof. You know that scene in the Avengers where Tony Stark picks up Hawkeye? <laughs> yep. It's kind of what I'm picturing. So you're going to the roof? Just to, at least to get a good look and to see if it's uh, um, clear enough to... A viable entrance? Put a viable entrance, yeah. Alright, um, as you fly forward, uh, you do see there is what appears to be an open air, uh, like, overlook. It's an area where, where it's open and, and you can look into the into the hillside. Um, with your dark vision, you see a door guard currently keeping tabs on the hillside. You quickly so duck below, and it, it doesn't see you. But you've managed to see a door guard overlooking the entire area. Just the one? Yeah, there's only one on the roof that you can see. I'll whisper down to Trin, there's one on the roof, but we got a clear view down into the... Uh, into the... Into the keep, right? We have a clear view of what's inside. No, no, just the upper, like, castle wall. Like okay. a walkway. Okay. Do we want to continue, Trin? Sure. I'm just along for the ride. All right. Be ready to pull that ripcord, and I'll... I'm going to try and get as far away from the Durgar as possible. But, like, if he's over... Uh, arrow. How do I do an arrow? Uh, if he's in this area, then I would head... Oh, come on now. Then I would head over this way. 
So I ran on the right side. Uh, I'm trying to just be on the opposite side as him. Opposite side? Okay, so that's the west side of the outpost. Towards the south. Yeah. Alright. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find a sneaky spot to set her, set Trin down. Alright, so you head over to the west side of the outpost. Um, you can set her down on the upper, upper cliff. Um, doing a quick glance, you don't see any... This, this is an outpost built in to the actual mountain. So there is, the only roof-like place was that overlook that you briefly passed by. Okay. But we could easily get to that, from that spot down to where the Durgar is. And you're on the very opposite side, so furthest away you can possibly be. Okay. But that'll give me enough time to come down and get somebody else. So Trin's not alone for very long. Yeah. That will work. So that's like oh oh over here. Uh the outlook is right here. That's where the roof the open section of the outpost is. Everything else is in the mountain. Oh. Oh. Okay. So basically what I'm trying to tell you, there is no way to go in through the roof. Because there is no roof. Okay. I misunderstood you. I apologize. No, that's all right. It's really complicated, and I don't know how to use Spanish grams properly yet. So, okay, so then I, I, I would just come back to the ground then and let Trin off. Yeah, this is is uh, think of it like a cave system. But instead of a cave, it's stone building, but it's all built into the mountain. So the roof is the mountain. Okay. You could try to so maybe put, like break the bars and head in through the overlook, but that's the only area that's outside that has any like outside uh ness to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's the the small little uh bunker to the side. There's the barred outlook. There's the double doors. And that's all you can see from just a one pass over. Did you wanna to go to a specific spot and start searching around? That you can let me know, but that's it's going to be difficult. Yeah. There's two so, Durgar currently keeping an eye on the, the area. One in the bunker, one in the overlook. That you know of. Okay. And since this is the first quest, and Sandy's ground is making it harder, actually, um, map-wise, I'm gonna give some help. Um, let's just look at the party sheet. Okay, uh, Astar being the most intelligent, or, I mean, so pretty intelligent, you could also maybe think that the river might lead somewhere, if further investigated, as well. 
it must have come from inside the mount, uh, the mountain, in the base somehow. It is frozen, but perhaps there's another route. Yeah. I... I'd probably point that out, say we need to s try and slip past this outpost and get to the mouth of the river, the stream. See if we can get in through there, nearby at least. You mean back down, Bios? Yeah, I'm I'm back down. Like I'm ten feet from you. I'll say, well, there's bars up here, up there, as it goes into the mountain. That's what I said. I think it goes in and underneath. Yeah. Follow it. We can probably probably get those bars out of the stone. They probably aren't even near that phone. They might even already do something something back there. Oh. So I guess we're going that route. I mean yeah. Yes, let's do it. Uh follow If Von Rick thinks he knows the way, and let's go with Von Rick. Sounds good. So which way are you heading? Follow the stream to where it's barred. Okay. So heading down um, to the bottom of this uh, canyon area that's hillside. You follow the frozen river, and you come to the culvert, and it is currently barred. You could pull the bars off quietly and crawl through on your belly. That is exactly what I would plan to do then. If I think I can get the bars out quietly, then that's what I'm doing. Alright. I've already had you guys roll stealth to do approaching this, so the group saved your almost blunder there, Vonrick. But you may manage to get inside and as you head in, who's in the in the front? Is it you, Vonrick? I would actually, um, as I open it up, I'd Ashtar, do you want to go in first? You're probably quickest, and you have dark vision. Um, I think it's probably good if Malin or Trin, you stay between a couple of us that can see. Yes, I can... Take a look around first. Oh, I will slip in first, I guess. Quiet me. Alright, now that you're in the keep, uh, proper, I'm gonna need a cell check from you. Oh! Natural one! Okay. As you creep, creep, creep a lot, come on. There we go. As you creep along and pop up in the circular drainage kind of hole in the middle of what you are now in the main keep of this building. This place is devoid of decoration, uh, the main hall. Um, it 
This is... Hang on, uh... Date pit. Uh... Yeah. So... The frozen well... Uh, there's a frozen well. And it stands... Near the... There, actually, you would up be over here. There's the well over there. Uh, you see a frozen well near the eastern hallway. Um, you use, oh, those are the, sorry. Those are actually the iron cages. Uh, along that wall are three iron cages. One inside is a very, very smelly, smelly, uh, thing. Uh, make a perception check, please. Twelve. This extremely foul older creature is huge. Its eye... Its eye looks fine, it's normal. And then it turns its face. Wait to see you. And the other eye is completely empty. Skin falling off. This is an ogre. But this is an undead ogre. Ugh. As it sees you, it howls. In a sad, despair. Uh, howl. Oh. The other two cages hold very sad and nervous goats. They start yeah. j jittering and bumping into the cage uh, inside uh, as the howl goes. I'm uh, sorry, the, the goats are in one cage. Two goats. The third cage is currently empty. And next to the cages is a dog sled with ice clinging to it. Okay. The sound of the howl echoes. What do you do? Um, I need to try and find a place to hide for a moment. Because I'm assuming someone's going to be coming along soon. Is this area up uh, I'm just going to move my character for a second. I'll, I'll bring him back to where he is. Um, is this area up high, like, like up off the ground, or is that flat? Um, that is... What is that? That is uh, the drawbridge. So that would mean... It is currently flat, I guess. Because the drawbridge is not up, it's not down right now. Okay. Uh, is there anywhere up high, like, uh, that I could tuck up into the corner on top of something? Um... The, the, there's nothing really to, to go up, that you can climb on the wall, can fly up and cling to the wall, but there's no upper landing or anything. Okay. Did we hear that wailing from outside? Yeah, you would have heard that. I would start ushering people in like, Trin, go. We need to get in there. can't be in there by himself. Yep, I'll go right in. Oh, are you are you going sneakily? Oh no! Uh, if it if if Von Rick made it sound like it was uh, um, like I had to get in there to help, I would scramble in. 
Okay. Yeah. But okay, then I will I will go up to the highest point on the ceiling corner that I can and just using every bit of you know, claw and pressure that I can to latch myself up. No, don't do that. That's crazy. <laughs> Make an athletics check, but with disadvantage. These are very icy, very uh, hard to climb. Pretty impossible without climbing your magic. So it's disadvantage athletics. Can you change your dice color on here? Yes. Under options. Or no. You can just click the thing at the... Oh, wait, that won't work. Right, where it says colors. Got it. It looks like a color palette. It does. Okay. Uh, athletics. Oh, nope. Trying to get this to work. Hopefully, this works. All right, it dropped to 12, gave a 10 instead. So that worked. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah clicking, the little, clicking the little disadvantage in the bottom left corner before rolling worked. Yes, that works. Um, it, it, as you leap up and try to climb, uh, your, your arms are slipping off the ice and you fall back down. You're not able to latch on and stay. So what what uh, what are you doing as a, as you try that? You hear uh, footsteps approaching from the east. Um, I don't know. There's nothing. I mean, I could dive back down into the goddamn thing, the well. Just kind of tuck back in there. I don't know if that'll work, though. Um, wait, you said this is a drawbridge. Uh, it is, yeah. And it's it's laying flat on the ground. Uh, well, I guess it's up against the the doors right now. Can I just? perch up on top of it um if it's like if it's if it's standing up against the wall then there's going to be uh you know depending on how thick it is and if it's built to hold any weight it's probably eight to ten inches wide or thick i mean so that's a thick enough platform to stand on sir sure, i'll allow that why not? And I'll just crouch down like, you know, uh, a gargoyle. <laughs> and then as soon as you do that, you see Trin pop, pop her head up out of the hole into, in, into the uh, main keep. And there's still no light force? No, no light. <laughs> So I can't see anything, but I scramble out of the well, and I, I'm like, Avatar, try and hide. I fucking hide where? Back in the damn well. Uh, I um. Make a stealth check, Trin. Okay. Uh. Oof. Bad. Nine. Mm-hmm. I am. 
attempt to climb back in the well, but I'm like just hanging like from the lip of it from the ledge. This entire time Von Rick's trying to get tell him Chime to go and then tell him Malin to go right behind Chime, realizing shit, I sent Trin in and she can't see anything in the dark. So <laughs> Malin Ch Chime, right behind Chime. Ch Chime. Chime would put her tail in Malin's hands and go, you know not to pull, and start scrambling in. <laughs> yeah, and then you immediately get kicked by Trin because she's hanging from the mouth of the well. Alright, you all, you all clamor inside. <laughs> and yeah. um, I, I'm still having a lot of trouble putting things on the map, unfortunately. I don't so easy before. Incredibly easy. I don't don't know what I'm doing wrong. Um well, they just so maybe it's all funky. Sorry? There they just... Deep. Yeah. I think I just don't know what I'm doing. Because <laughs> I thought you click this and then... I watched the video and... You click this and then... There's a GM, GM map and a player map, I assumed. Put you guys on the player map. Um, oh, okay, maybe that'll work. Well, I'm still out here on the player map all by my little self because nobody remembered me or, or, and I no, couldn't we're catch all, up. We're all in there. Yeah, we no. are. Unless somebody uh, came you... and got me, remember, I'm blind. I couldn't see anybody. Couldn't see anything. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, you got I moved. Could... Yeah, you got moved, and you're you're with us. You're you're holding on to Chime's tail. Okay, I'll take that. But my little map just shows me out here all by myself, so I didn't yeah. even know that I got moved. That's yeah. okay. I don't even see me on my map, so. Well, I can't move the map to even center me, so I don't know how to do this. Well, uh, you see that little gold icon in the bottom right corner, Mama? Yep. If you click and hold on that and then drag it, like, top left in a northwestern direction, uh, it'll it'll pull the map. Towards where your token is. So you should see your token. I have now found my token. It's itty bitty on this great big huge map still. But anyway. You can scroll in. Yeah, use your scroll wheel. All right, so. Um, a, a Durgar, uh, woman approaches as you all clamor out of the underground, uh, what, what, waterway, appear here, and, uh, the Durgar looks really confused, and it's time for initiative. So to do initiative, um, oh my god, my brain. How do you do initiative? I think on your main sheet, there should do be initiative. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Nice. So, first up uh, is Trin. This Durga comes in and it gets freaked out. What are you doing? 
Okay, I must be confused because I thought that I had jumped back into the well that we had climbed out of to hide. Right, and she can still see you uh, poking out there. So she says... But I can't see her. Uh... That's dark. Right, so you hear her. Yeah, I don't know if she's even walked into the room until I hear her. Yeah. So what okay. what do you do in the next six seconds, knowing that? Well, I, I, I don't know that she can see me. I think I'm well hidden. That is true, yeah. Because uh, I'm imagining I'm hanging from my fingertips down in the well. Uh, kind of, yeah. Sure. So I, I don't think I don't think she can see me, and if she can, then what am I going to do about it? Nothing right now. <laughs> well, I can't even see her. Um, she's supposed to be on the map, but I guess it's not working. Um, can you not see her on the map? No. This no. is where my vision ends. How about that? Oh, there, there she, she is. is. Okay. I'm starting to figure things out on fantasy grounds. I just, I really need to spend time and, and do a test campaign or something. Um, so yeah, there, there she is. So, Trent, Tr you're gonna... Stay, stay put. Mm -hmm. I'm just hanging out. All right. Um. It, Can it's, I? The well oh. is not. It's not like. It's something you have to crawl out of. Because mm -hmm. it, it does say you guys crawl out. Of uh, the waterway area, into mm -hmm. this room. So I think it's more like a hole in the floor, is what I'm guessing. Okay. And they don't have the hole in the map. It's very confusing. Um, the well is something separate. Um. Okay. So, um. So we didn't climb, climb out of a well, we climbed out of a hole? Yeah, a hole. Maybe, could it be referring to that space underneath the drawbridge, Ari? Underneath the drawbridge? Yeah, because there's that big um, rectangular hole that is under the drawbridge. Oh, that's probably it. Okay. Let's place you guys there, then. That makes more sense. Yeah, okay. How, how deep is that hole? Um, that, it's, it's... Uh, let's see if there's a description. Oh, man. Not going as smoothly. Oh. What happened? Not going as smoothly as I hoped. But hopefully, it will, I will know Fantasy Grounds much better with practice. But, um. It is 30 feet foot deep. Um, okay, so. Same game plan. She's hanging by her fingertips. In the thirty-foot deep pit. Okay. Hi, quote unquote hiding. Yes. Um. Can I? So, I heard Ashtar say to hide. So I know something or someone is coming. Um. So can I hold an action to um. Punch. Whatever is coming, if it tries to pull me out of the pit? Yeah, for sure. 
Okay. Also, forgot to sig yeah. forgot to signify it's your turn. There we go. It centered me on the map and made a fun noise. <laughs> Alright, next up. Time. Alrighty. Um, seeing this Durgar, I'm going to try... Mm. I wouldn't know much about Durgar, so I couldn't say if I know if they're intelligent or not. I'd probably assume they are, seeing as how they're a type of dwarf, and my friend Vonrick is very smart. You're generous. That That's a big ish. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to... I guess I'm going to firebolt her. See if I can do this. I'm going to target her... Uh, and let's see if I can do this right. Uh, oh, did I not do that right? Did you put it in the tower? I might have, I might have put it in the tower. Yeah, I don't need to put it in the tower right now. Okay. Um, but okay. I, I see... Uh, I see the roll. Uh huh. And because you put in the tower, though, it didn't target the, uh. Do I need to try again? Uh, yeah, roll again. Okay. Just drop it right. Sure I <laughs> yeah, that has missed. Fireball yep. goes wide. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, let's see. Um, for bonus action, uh, I don't, I don't really have any bonus actions right now, so, uh, I will try to move back. A little bit there that's well no right there that makes me feel more comfortable um well so you this is a 30 foot pit and i assume oh. you were kind of up hanging like twin was uh okay so that would take your turn to get down to the bottom ah uh, and i already used my action to hurl a firebolt over the top of the thing at her. Yeah, but you have enough uh, so movement I... to climb down. Just not across. Okay, so, he... okay, so yeah, I'll do that. I'll climb down. Alright. Oh, I don't judge her. Yeah. doesn't need to be there. I can delete her. Yeah. Um, and that will be my turn. Run, Rick. Right now you're targeting yourself. Just FYI, according okay. to fantasy grounds. Yes. Um. Also, for speed, you can actually drag your attack right onto the token on the map, onto the little Durga guy, and then let go, instead of okay. doing all the, the targeting things. Well... I'm going to pull myself up to the edge on top and seeing this Durgar, you said woman? Yes. Or at least what I believe. Um, I am going to pull myself up and say, excuse me, we were trying to track a creature that had stolen some things from the town below and we followed the tracks here I was hoping you might help and I'm going to hold a 
sacred flame if she attacks me, myself, or one of my friends. Okay. Is that that's your turn? Yep, I pull myself up, talk, and then yeah. Let's try five, your turn. Um Oh shoot, come on. What the hell do I need? Uh Onrix trying to do diplomacy. I will play along, however, cautiously, I will glide down from my perch, five, ten, That's not right. No. Five, ten. I'll go down to here. And I will hold. Hold an action to attack if she comes close and attacks me. Okay. <clears throat> it's now the Durgar's turn. Um, it's going to use an action to it didn't do what I wanted, but it, it's supposed to grow in uh, size. It doesn't look like it did, but the red square around it grew. I don't know if you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can. Yes. So, it has grown into that big of a creature. You see its entire form just enlarge to a really large creature. Um... And it moves. Uh, okay. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Nope, twenty-five. It moves right there. It seems very defensive right now. It is now Milan Bunny Ears. Okay, a couple of things here. First of all, I'm ho supposed to be holding on to Chime's tail. But since I can't see Chime, I have no idea where she is on said map. Number one. Number two, since I don't know where anybody else is other than the Durgar guy who just went off of my map when it became my turn, um, I guess my best bet would be to hold on to Chime's tail wherever she is and um, keep my quarterstaff since I seem to be able to, it says I can do my quarterstaff one-handed. Um, it takes two to do my longbow, so and I know that. so. I would have my longbow now on my back and my quarterstaff in my one hand. So in case somebody gets close, I can at least bap them with it. 
All right. That's it. I'm done. Trin. Okay, sorry. Um, she still uh, hasn't come to get me. Mm -mm. I... I mean, I can't do anything if I can't see anything. Um... I guess I'm just going to do the same thing. I'll just hang out here and see if she comes near. And if she does, then I will, uh, I guess. Bap her. Bap her. I'll, I mean, it'll have to be a fist bap because I don't have a, uh, well, I guess I have a short sword. I guess I could stab at thee. That or you got a shield? Just push her. I mean, doesn't ma really matter. You, you're scared. You're going to hit her. Yeah. I don't have a shield, but I do have a short So I'll, I'll one hand hold on the a, a lip of this. Uh, um, what torch? Um, oh, I do have a torch. Yeah, okay. They seem to be relying on dark vision. Um, maybe light will fuck them up. So I will climb out of the, off the ledge and onto solid ground and light a torch. Torch is now on you. Cool. Can I toss it kind of still lit kind of towards the, the between us? Between the, us and the Durgar. I wish you didn't ask me that. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, I'm, I'm to it. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea how to um, do that. I will... Can we just pretend? <laughs> uh, that's hard, though, when you're using a map. Um, okay, uh, hold on. Let me just get a random NPC token. <laughs> I'm just gonna use. Oh nope, that was not what I wanted. Just put Jartha in there, Jarthra. Oh, a bird. Is it a multicolored bird? Person. Is it two can Sam? Come on. Of the monk uh, persuasion. <laughs> this is gonna be odd, but there's suddenly a a bird. Oh, that's cool. I didn't mean to do that. I'm not meaning to glow. How do I turn that off? How did you glow? Uh, oh, you put a tools? candle on you. Yeah. I was trying to see if there was like a way to drag that onto the map. Just out of curiosity. Yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway, Aquacoca is now a torch. So. Cool. Okay. I'm taking off your torch I gave you. And put it on the bird, because that's where you want it. Yes. Um, okay, I'm assuming pulling that out and lighting a torch is an entire action. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't think that I have... Oh, actions. Anything else that I can do? I'm a baby fighter, so I don't have a lot of abilities right now. Um, 
Yeah, no. That's gonna be it for me. Okay. It is now time's turn. Okay. Now there is a torch out, so can you see Myelin? Myelin, can you see, dear? Sorry, my mic was off. Yes, I don't have to, to hold your tail. All right. I will use my feline agility to climb out of this little hole. Because as a tabaxi, I have a 30-foot climb speed. Oh, yes. Forgot about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, would that get me to the top of the hole? Yeah, for sure. Alright, and you guys are attempting diplomacy, right? But she did something in retaliation, so... <sighs> I'm gonna try to firebolt her again. Alright. Eighteen, that hits. Woo! Go ahead and roll damage. Seven. Uh, did you drag the damage also onto the oh. token? Nope, but I can do that. I dare. Okay. Good, I don't have to type anything. So, uh, status is now moderate. So take that as you will. I've... I've... Oh. Oh, I did not mean to click that. I was trying to bring up the combat tracker to look at it. You clicked end turn. <laughs> I did not mean to click that. I was trying to... All I could see was a little corner of my combat tracker, so I just clicked the corner where... <laughs> um... And there's no... No, I'm getting you on a... Do something else. Uh, but the fireball flew through the air and hit her right in the face. Burned her beard. Was... And, uh... <laughs> She is very angry. Yes. I'm trying to remember how many sorcery points I have. Uh, none, I think. None until level two. Hmm. Right. Never mind. So I don't have any bonus actions. So, yeah, that's my turn. Alright, it's Vondrick. And she went after I spoke to her, made no attempt at answering me, just kind of growled, grew twice her size, and moved somewhat threateningly towards Ashtar. Def right? Defensively. Kind of backing away, kind of, but moving in that direction, yes. I tried to speak with the creature, so... I'm actually going to turn on movement now. So you have to uh, do movement and then I accept it. Accept the, the movement. Are you going to do Sacred Flame? Yes. Oh, that's right. It is a dexterity saving throw. Uh, DC 4 Dex. So if you go to your actions, and oh, I think you got it. Oh, if I kit you, cast, you, she you, roll for her. Yeah, you you're still targeting yourself. Um, let me see if I can take that off. There, now you're targeting nobody. Now you should be able to drag 
the uh, sacred flame onto her. Uh, failure. Failure, so now drag the damage. Four damage. Alright, a radiant blast hits uh hits this dragar. Um it erupts around her arms. It, the the dragar is, is hurt. Um but same status which is moderate. If you mouse over the Durgo token, it should tell you the status. I think. No, it just said it just says their name. No. I'm not seeing anything other than Earthed. Oh, there's a small little dot in the bottom right corner of her token. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, that's what it is. Like we, we all have a little green one. Okay. Are, are we supposed to be able to see her on the combat tracker or no? Uh, no. Okay, just making sure. All right, so that's a uh, your action there. You're gonna move. Um. I think I'll move to there. Okay. Is that your turn? Boom. I asked our time, your turn. Okay. Uh, we have popped off. So. Uh, I don't want her getting near that cage. I'm just going to slide up here. Did that work? Sorry, I need to accept it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and I will turn. Oh, come on. To face her. And okay, let's have a little fun. That hits wonderful. Oh, seven. You are. Uh... Slash, oh no, you bash her with your corner hat, stab spinning in the air, slamming it into her, her cheek, and blood splats onto the ground. And if you can look at the status, she's not doing well. Right. Heavy. So then... Uh, I will follow that up with a bonus action unarmed strike. If this succeeds, I want to render her unconscious, not dead. Okay. That misses. You go for it a, a punch, but that misses her. Okay. Uh, then I will just, um, pull back, ready to strike again if necessary, but I don't want her passing me, so, um, where is my, here it is, it's my turn. All right, with her turn, she is going to she's going to try and get past you so you need to make 
uh, an athletics check. She is enlarged, so she is charging straight towards you, full, full bashing speed, to push you out of the way. Ramming speed, Captain! 16. I'm gonna make this contested. So she... Where is her bonus? Oh, I don't need to go to the seat. I can just go here. I think I can go here. Oh, there we go. And advantage, because she's enlarged. That's one in natural five. That's not good for her. So, she tries her best to push right into you, but you, you hold completely steady against her, just pushing her back. As she's ramming, but you're pushing. You're keeping her at bay. Uh, that was her bonus action. So as her action, she's going to... Uh, let's see, how is she? Hmm. So try the attack. Yeah. She has a war pick. And she's going to try and hit you with the war pick. Okie dokie. Uh, wait, why is it? Hold on. Oops. That was not a roll. Why is it saying it's two types of damage? Let me just check that. Oh, oh, that's nice. Alright, she's enlarged. So, it's really double damage. So, first to hit. Three plus, nope, seven to hit. Not even close. She swings and completely misses you. The air itself is pushed back with her swing, but it's slow. Powerful but slow, and you easily dodge it. Um, she's panting, shivering from the cold. She doesn't like it. And she... And her turn there. Maybe I'll end bunny years. Okay, let's see if I can move here. So, each one of these things. Okay, 5, 10, 15. That looks good. So, I'm going to move to there. And then I am going to swap weapons. So I now have my longbow out as opposed to my quarterstaff. All right. So is that my action? If you're going to put away your quarterstaff, it is. If you want to just drop the quarterstaff on the ground, then you can pull it out as a free action. Okay, I'm going to do that then. That would be a better idea because then I could still at least shoot an arrow. Alright, so you chuck the quarter stuff on the ground, pull out the bow, and, and fire. I... Well, how do I target? Um, so there's two ways of doing it. The fastest way is just on your character sheet, um, you go to uh, actions. At the bottom tab. Uh huh. And then there's longbow there. And there's, right. there's a plus five. So, uh huh. So you drag that plus five onto the token on the map and then let go. So onto the token I want to hit. Yes, correct. Gotcha.
Ooh, four plus five, though. The arrow... I know. It flies wide and hits the... the wall. Okay. Alright, is that your turn? Yes, because I have no bonus actions yet. Alright. So I am done. Finn, it is your turn. Okay, I can still see her, and I can see... Cool, okay. Um... Oh, okay. I am going to... reach for the rifle that is strapped to uh, my back, but as I reach for it, my hand kind of shakes a little bit, and I revert to the longbow... Um, and I will take a shot. Am I too close? Too close? No. No? Okay. Uh, okay. So I'm gonna try to shoot her. Um, and I will do... How do I open this? Um, I am going to... Do sharpshooter. Alright, so oh, at the I bottom. Think I can click the minus five, right? Yes, correct, and then roll. And then roll. Um, okay. Uh, oof. Yeah, that uh, does not hit. Okay. Um, alright. Then, that's gonna be my turn. Also, don't forget to drag it onto the character next time. Oh, yep, you got it. Oh, drag what? Like, the roll? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just clicked from the bottom, so. Yeah, you click the minus five, but then to, you drag that. Right. Yeah, I put it in the toolbar at the bottom, though. But I'll I'll drag it onto her next time. Yeah, you can drag it from I think you can drag it from the toolbar onto her. Cause then it'll do the automation. Alright, I'm pretty sure that misses. Yeah. That misses. Alright. So is that your turn? That is it. Alright, uh the light doesn't get a turn. Alright, time, your turn. Alright, I will move forward just a little bit to right there. Oh, right. Hang on. Okay. Oh, you did. And then I will cast Mind Sliver on her. Okay, same, same deal, Dragon. Uh, she passed. She so, did, yes. Um, nothing happens. Yeah, uh, you feel the, uh... The... You, you, you kind of see Chime spinning her hands as if they were the hands of a clock. And the gears in her eyes spin faster and faster. But instead of the Durgar hearing the grinding of gears... You kind of see Chime twist her head as if a really loud, painful sound happened in her ears because it didn't go the right way. Okay. Um, yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Next up is... Vonrick. Alrighty. Well. Seeing as how things are still going on, I'm going to move up right to her. And... Directly there because she's big. 
Okay. Are you? Wow. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I will take it. Third natural 20 today. Um, I think, yeah. I think Rob's dice are weighted. So... How do you weight pixels? Uh, he's figured it out somehow. I think they're just funky colored. <laughs> Ten points of damage. Um, the status has changed as you have the opportunity to finish your foe. How would you like to? Um, as I hit her, I am not trying to kill her. I am trying to near, clearly just knock her unconscious. And... And once she is unconscious, I can't remember if you said one of those cage was empty or if all three had things in them. One was empty. The other one has two goats. The third has an ogre undead. Okay. The empty one. Once I strip her of any material items, not her clothing, but any any items in pack in uh pockets or anything like that. Once I strip her of those, I will then put her in that cage. Alright, um let me just figure out uh Okay, here we go. Um, she has a pickaxe, a javelin, and that's about it. And some and a shield and scale mail. Okay. But yeah, that's about it. You said war pick or pickaxe? War pick. It's it's a military pickaxe. Or pick javelin scale mail. Alrighty. So yes, once I take those items off of her. Alright, go ahead and mark that. Well, I guess I could drag it onto a sheet for you, but, um... Oh, okay. I don't have that prepared in parcels. That's fine. I just wrote it in my adventures log, which I'm assuming is probably for, normally for adventure league. It is, yeah. Your inventory would be for inventory stuff. Um... Yeah, I can just quickly do it. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah, I can. Scale mail is in the inventory now. In your bag. A shield is in your bag. You already had one, now you have two. Okay. And... A war pick.
is also there. Okay. So, that is there as, as you, you calm down from this fight and figure out what to do. You hear more movements, seemingly attracted by the sound of this battle. And that's where we're going to leave it for today. Ooh. First combat Woohoo. in Fantasy Ground. Woohoo! Yeah. Woo. I need to learn how to do it better. I think you did a great job, Ari. Yes, you did. Yeah. I think you did just fine. We all have to learn it better. Yeah. I would call this a definite success. Very much so. Oh, sorry, bot. It says goodbye. All right. Well, that I was fun. I hope this was was fun. We'll get better at fantasy rounds. I will see if I can watch more videos. Um, and it will go a lot more smoothly. Main thing I need to figure out is placing and having encounters ready, because it's a little bit weird. Um, but yeah. So that is, well, I'll put this guy over here. Oh, she, I mean, she's in the cage. <laughs> ready to be interrogated. She's in the or, cage in the corner. Or perhaps found as more, this is an empty outpost after all. All right, until next time, far flung adventures. Investigate more of the Durga hideout. Woo woo. Thanks, Ari. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ari. Great game. Thank you. Thank you.